welcome back to electric vehicles channel my dear friends i am krishnadeep mandela today we have mr nilay chandra with us who is the director and the managing director of uh, charging infrastructure for ether energy mr nilay chandra please introduce to our electric vehicle audience hi uh, good afternoon everyone i am a director for marketing and charging infrastructure at ether i've been with ether for the last five and a half years uh, been part of the growth journey of the company and i'm here today with krishna to answer whatever questions he might have and in turn all of you might have so yes that's my quick introduction is right away my first question to you is why there is no detachable battery option for either portables okay good question so uh, good so the, the question is particularly about detachable battery just i'll just set some context right that you could recharge the battery from three ways like right? the charging infrastructure the way we uh, way we operate Uh, a charging a charging strapping in which like you do not have your own battery but you basically go like a petrol pump to another location and you strap your battery out and the third one that you're talking about is a detachable battery which the consumer still continues to own but takes out of the vehicle and charges it at the comfort of the home etc now uh, there are there are good reasons of having each one of this in different use cases so my answer is more towards why as ether we choose to take this direction and not what is right what is wrong for ether if you look at the consumer that we are looking at the consumer really prizes great products and good experience right and i will now explain to you what a detachable battery does to both of this firstly for the kind of range that ether is looking at you are talking about a battery that's around 20 to 25 km kgs right now on an everyday basis carrying a 20 to 25 kg unit at the end of your day back to your home and again carrying it back and remember scooter is not a single use um, product which means that anybody in your family could be using it from an indian context to have this as an additional effort that the consumer would have to take up would be according to us an inhibitor to owning an electric vehicle and that is one big reason why we chose a charging infrastructure versus a detachable battery the second thing is the moment you make a battery detachable you lose quite some efficiency in the drive plane because now this particular unit by itself has to be an ip67 i i keep saying this in multiple forums that if you can take out a detachable battery then probably there are a lot of people who can also do that in a parking lot right which means that now you have to invest surmountably higher for the safety of this unit while it is locked on without your intervention while it's should be very easy for you to take out because that's an action you're going to do every day and because the connections the joints all of them have to be built in the way that they can be detached out you lose a lot of efficiency in the vehicle today for ether the battery is a structural member it shares the load of the drive plane of the of the chassis and that's not something that you can do if you're designing the product to be detachable in nature so long story short uh, to keep the consumer experience of regular usage better and to make sure that um, the product is safe and it is not inefficient these are three broad reasons why we went down the route of choosing a charging option versus a detachable battery so in in a short way you can say like for the efficiency purpose you are not using giving the option of a detachable option all the three yeah. the efficiency is lower the safety of battery which is 30 40% of your vehicle cost that safety um, like from pilferage etc can get compromised and the third thing is carrying it on and off every day is something that we do not expect every member of the indian house so mr nilay my next question to you is uh, when can we expect an electric bike from ether energy so uh, i'll be honest when we started uh, i think most of the uh, engineers and people from id would join they all wanted to build a bike right and we wanted to, we had to build a scooter so we keep joking about the fact that we put everything of a bike into a scooter and that's how our scooter is very different Uh, but yes in the immediate term i don't think there is a plan to uh, launch a bike i think scooter is a expansive category we have to do a lot more in this space so in the next couple of years i don't see us coming uh, with a bike in the next 4 to 5 years horizon we should have a bike in our portfolio is all that i can say for this is actually most of the subscribers ask this question like is it possible ether energy is planning to launch any affordable electric scooter in the market uh, don't worry we i think this is one of the most often asked question that we also get right okay uh i'll i'll try and answer this in a in two three lines and and then we can expand it to more right today our belief is that people will own an electric vehicle over a petrol vehicle only if the performance of the electric vehicle is equal or better than a petrol scooter okay so this is our belief with which we build our products which is why we don't build products which are considerably substandard from the petrol equivalent 
at a lower price point. There are many other players who will be able to build that product and be able to sell. That's not the space that we want to play. Now, if we have to build a product which is equal or better than petrol scooters, then we are talking about uh, a certain kind of a motor, a certain kind of a battery. Um, and the cost of all of those units put together sort of starts getting you to the space at which our 450 plus and our 450X is. And a good testimony of this is that if uh, for these kind of performance, if it was possible to build way cheaper scooters, then forget us. There are more bigger players who have entered into this for you, like a Bajaj has entered, a TVS has entered. They have the muscles of, of you know, supply chain. They have wide distribution, etc. It would have been very easy for them to, uh, for this performance, have products which are, let's say, 50,000 rupees or 70,000 rupees. But that's not been the case. And hence, I think for a near term, till the prices of these major components, like the battery or the motor, does not come down substantially, to get to a price point, and again, when we say affordable, I think affordable is uh, today an Activa 125cc on road, our hypothesis is around 95,000 to a lakh, depending upon what kind of accessories that you put. Like the basic accessories, once you add to it, it's a lakh, right? And the 450 plus is at a 1 lakh 40. So really in affordability space, we are talking about this 40,000 rupees, which very clearly gets back to the consumer within a three years period from a running cost perspective. As you mentioned, like uh, it's around 1 lakh to this amount, but this point I have to highlight, like even after the fame to skip subsidies for the 30,000 rupees for eight of profit takes, why it is still 1 lakh 69,000 rupees? I am asking about Hyderabad, it is around 1 lakh 69,000 on price. Yes. So why yes. is that case? Are you sure that it is going to be like uh, more than 1 lakh 90,000 after the subsidies, 30,000 rupees, it became 1 lakh 60,000? Yes, very much. Yes, very much. And then that's the that's the point. The, the price that we are comparing of everyone, even of, let's say, uh, the other big competitors who are there, are all after fame, right? And they are all sitting in the same ballpark price. Uh, there are some players who try to launch it at a lower price, but recently there's news of them also increasing price. There is news of a lot of these players excluding the charger, the home charger from this price and charging it separately. So if an, a real intender goes into the market to buy a good electric vehicle, then I think the prices of all of the players are in a very similar ballpark. And the price difference which the consumer has in upfront price between a petrol scooter purchase and a good electric scooter purchase today gets easily compensated over the next three years period in the running cost okay and and this is not a, a pricing that has come out of huge profitability and i'm being very honest about that right? it, it is the kind of component cost and manufacturing cost that exists for an electric vehicle in india and uh, this is one more point like this is actually one more uh, most of the viewers asked about like after purchasing the ether profit text why they need to pay additional 2000 rupees for the google maps usage and all even, even after the purchase uh, so again, I think I think let's let's put that number into perspective, right? Uh, there is a SIM in the vehicle. There is a charge that Aether pays to uh, you know the the SIM provider on a monthly basis, right? And it is that charge plus very minimal maintenance cost of the software for all the compulsory OTAs that is passed on to the consumer. It is like if I had to make profit, I would not charge 125 rupees a month on something, right? And also remember, like we give the consumer the option if somebody definitely does not want to pay. It's not something that we mandatorily force on the consumer. It is optional for the consumer. But why does somebody have to pay a repetitive cost is because the SIM has a repetitive cost. I'm not extracting value of my upfront product over a period of time. It is a cost that I have to pass on, pay to a, a SIM provider for their maintenance over a period of time for the services that they provide. And I think all intelligent vehicles will end up having a charge like this. What we have tried to do from earlier having just one single charge, which was around 250 bucks per month or, or higher, is to bring that number substantially down so that a consumer who wants to enjoy the basic features of, of intelligence on the vehicle does not have to pay a lot of amount. That's been so the you are charging infrastructure. You have mentioned like uh, either grid. And I, I firstly mm. would like to congratulate for giving the free charging stations. But who are not just Ether energy users, but even though our people are using electric vehicle. But there is a condition there I have clearly mentioned. The first few months are on my our side, later we'll charge. So okay. what about Ether 450X users? I'm not talking about uh, other electric vehicle users. 
will the ether grid free for ether for 50x users lifetime or will it charge oh, it's not it's not going to be free lifetime like i think i can't build a business case of uh, keeping on increasing infrastructure and it being free for a lifetime right so i don't want to set that expectation having said that like we launched our our scooters like two and a half years back and till date we've not charged a single consumer right yeah. whether it's ether consumer or it's non ether consumer and the last date that we had given was 31st march i think as of the last two days we've extended by another six months right so clearly if you look at if it's an organization who wants to make a lot of money out of the charging that's happening we wouldn't have done that right uh, but are we in a position to say that forever this is going to be free and forever we are going to keep on installing more and more charging will it be any difference for either the 450x users or other electric vehicle users will it show any difference it will definitely be i think for the either 450x user at a minimum cost like our other subscriptions those consumers will have an unlimited access to how much ever charge they want to do whereas for a non ether consumer it will be a paper use basis or if it's a subscription it will be a higher subscription for sure like ether consumers will always get a benefit because for us the bigger upside is consumers actually using the grid riding more utilizing the vehicle how much ever uh, revenue we collect from individual charges they are not going to be equal to the joy of consumers right more and more consumers right so our focus is on getting more and more consumers to right and we will do whatever it takes to make that happen. coming to the competitors right now you heard about i think simple energy they mentioned like to 80 km range electric scooter and they are in still in the production or whatever they are developing inside and one more competitor is the ola vehicle and they said for a 1 lakh pricing they going to launch the same features like what whatever it the pokex providing the ot upgrades and all like the uh, on that particular basis these two companies do you think these are your major competitors i think it's it's difficult to say i do not want to uh, like any claim which has been made by any player i i respect that okay uh, we obviously would like to see the the on road real specifications and and what gets delivered but even if those were all to be true okay i think electric vehicle is today in the space where we need more competitors we need more and more players to strong the market we need every oem to have an electric variant because that is when consumers will say hey this is where everything is going i need to buy an electric from the vantage point that we are sitting we actually welcome more and more players to come in whether it's the players that you mentioned or it is the existing oems uh so competition is good at this stage it's it's very very good right because it increases the consumer's awareness it it helps uh, utilization of the infrastructure you see more number of electric vehicles on the road um, residential complexes see more electric vehicles so they help set infrastructure workplaces see more of their users riding electric vehicles they uh, allow for infrastructure overall i think for the next 3 5 years there is no worry about more and more players coming the, the canvas is huge so vola already mentioned that they will come up with some billion vehicles uh, whatever they have action plan they are also has said they will build the world's largest electric two wheeler manufacturing plant so do you think either will coming up with a different idea why don't they reduce the pricing after the Uh, after Vola Electric Scooter launch, if they are really going to launch the affordable price, I, I I think it will be great for the industry if whatever uh, Ola has said actually comes true and they actually do all those numbers. My first response is I think it will be great for the industry. Right? If it's a reliable product, uh, which does uh, the kind of expectations that Ola has, I think it will be great for the industry. Right now, like should Ether Ether independently will continue to build more products in their portfolio, right? Uh, and it's more likely to be at a lesser price point than a higher price point than 450 is right i don't think that decision will get changed because of uh, any company launching at a particular price point because let's look at an allied category right? let's look at motorcycles right there is a huge straddle of prices there is a huge straddle of kind of features that's there and all of those products coexist there is need for each of those products i don't think uh, Uh, a triumph changes their product portfolio if uh, let's say hero comes with uh, something at the at the base model I, i don't think that that's the way it works right each of the players are working at particular part of that spectrum particular pricing particular offering different segment of consumer the expanse is huge i don't foresee a reason for us to react to products of competition you'll wait for uh, them to launch first then you'll come back okay that's that's a while no i think we we have plans of of building more product they will not be at the at the base of the category 
they'll always be in the more premium side, but maybe a little more inexpensive than what the 450X is. That horizon might be a year, two year. I don't think our plans are going to drastically change based on an Ola or any other company particularly building a product at a particular price. The entire electric two-wheel industry is running behind this uh, BLDC motor. But why Aether is choosing a different motor belt drive? Oh, so I probably will not be the best person to give you a very comprehensive answer, but I will still tell you that uh, we looked at we looked at all types of motors. The kind of motor that we've chosen right now allows us to optimize the performance of the vehicle uh, to the maximum. Remember, the 450X is is aimed at being a very high performance vehicle, and to be able to uh, modulate those performances in sync with the kind of battery that we have, uh, this is the best choice. Uh, if you were to build lower uh, price products, if you were to build something which is not of the kind of speed that we are looking at, we would probably look at alternate options of motor. Uh, but for the superlative product that we are building, I think this allows you to maximize your performance. This is actually from the investor point of view. Many people are interested to invest in Ether Energy. But when can we see Ether Energy listed on MSE or BSE? I, I don't have a date to it. I, I don't want to say any date without having a date to it. I, I don't have a date to it. Okay, okay, that's right. Like, one more point, like, Hero Motor Corp is one of the major investors of Aether Energy. So, is there any possibility of technology transfer between Aether Energy and Hero Motor Corp? No, so I think uh, Hero's investment in Aether is, is very clear. Hero sees electric being a very strong future. They continue to invest in their internal capability of building electric vehicles. They also want to leverage their opportunity of being investors in this ecosystem to make uh, maximum opportunity of the monetization. That's the principle with which Hero has invested in Aether. And over now we've spent considerable amount of time uh, of these two partners together. I think the roles are very clear uh, and, and there is no overlap of, of them using our technology just by because of the fact that they are investors and it's vice versa. So do Aether Energy use advanced battery technology like aluminum fuel cell technology, not just lithium ion battery? Today, we don't. Today, we use what is the most uh, stable technology that's there at RN. But remember, it's just not the cell. It's it's the entire uh, putting together of the battery and the BMS, which we do ourselves, right? So there is already a lot of advanced patented thinking which has gone into the building of the Aether battery. Uh, should we shift to another cell chemistry? Is really dependent on multiple factors because uh, you know those cell chemistries need to be stable for us to invest on it for a long time. Uh, the supply needs to be reliable and consistent and it needs to be really cost effective for us to continue to scale up at the cost that we're looking at. I think all of them have to be uh, have to come into play. And today, lithium ion seems like the best alternative that we work. This is uh, one more one more frequent asked question. Why is there probably available in limited colors like gray, green? And why? Why not red? Oh, there is there is no one particular logic of a particular color. We used to get this question a lot in Aether 450 when it was only in one color, right? So when we sort of moved from one color to three colors plus the collector's edition, we thought, okay, now we are not going to get this question. But I think consumers seek variety, and I think we respect that choice. See, uh, building products from scratch, launching them is always about making choices, right? You always want to do everything. But you have to choose to do the things which are required definitely at that moment uh, and phase out things so that uh, you don't want to try and do everything and not be able to do anything. If you have, let's say, 10 colors, the management of the colors, the management of the production, the management of the inventory, uh, availability, those are also factors to consider while deciding how many colors to go with. And I think we are at a, at a very optimal, healthy number. Does it mean that we'll have no colors in the next couple of years? No, we, we might have a color, a couple of more colors. Will we be a company which has, like, let's say the Scooty Peg, a huge variety of colors? I don't think we will be that company, uh, at least with the 450 experience. So we can expect more colors in coming days? See, that, that is a very uh, vague answer to give. So I can confidently give that answer to say, yes, some color in some future, sure, <laughs> why not? When can you, this is one more like futuristic question you can say, when can we expect either energy to import raw lithium? And uh, do the complete lithium and battery manufacturing in India. Right now, they have to manufacture, they have to import these cells, right? 
But is there any possibility we will import raw lithium and do complete cell manufacturing as well in India? In in the next year or two's horizon, I am not aware of any such plans for us to invest on that part of the capability. There are established lithium cell manufacturers. There is leverage of scale. There is leverage of sourcing. So unless something changes dramatically, to go and backward integrate into manufacturing of the cells. may not be something that we are looking at a short term to see any electric vehicle companies i am not talking about the made in, made in india you are actually completely purely made in india started from the chassis and the design and development but most of the electric two wheeler right now actually being imported and assembled in india and they are offering range of about 150 kilometers and uh, around 120 to 150 kilometers but as a point of competition side is ether looking for a range extension in the coming days like any plan for that uh, so uh, i would not want to comment on the statement that most players in the market are offering 120 to 150 kilometers i think what i can tell about us is that we are claiming numbers that consumers are getting on the road right uh, our ari certified range is 150 and that's not the number that we are claiming to the consumer we are still claiming our two yeah. ranges to the right so the numbers that we are claiming is the numbers that consumers actually get on the road for an urban context we believe that those are those are great numbers for a scooter ride uh, consumers typically don't end up riding scooters in a day for more than those kilometers remember a bunch of our consumers with the 450x and the 450s have reached like 120 kilometers 130 kilometers on road conditions right so range unlike the mileage of petrol is something that can change drastically depending upon the riding behavior and that possibility is there with consumers based on how they ride but if somebody wants to ride this vehicle for the kind of performance that it offers and yet get uh, you know a range of 120 to 150 then we are talking about a way more expensive product and then you'll come back and ask me why are you not building affordable products right so i think like building more uh, range while maintaining performance is an expensive proposition it's not only just expensive because of the battery because the moment you increase the battery size you also increase the weight of the vehicle you increase the weight of the vehicle all your components sort of need to beef up for that kind of weight for the safety purposes you need to optimize on space today the scooter is a very sleek design so if you want to not compromise on the design then you'll further in eat into boot space and boot space is something that's very important for this category so overall when you look at the trade off of a decision of increasing more range uh, without compromising on performance i don't think that's that's the right decision for the consumer i think having ways of more reliability of charging infrastructure getting the consumer to an easy habit of recharging when their battery uh, charge is going low those are probably more lower hanging fruits than making the consumer pay more for those few cases when they would want to ride a little so coming to tire to cities you have already mentioned about a future plan to expand all over india but is yeah. there any deadline take for an example like uh, in baisag and especially in uh, andhra side and bhubaneswar so but is there any deadline in by the end of 2021 or 2022 can we expect the overall tire to cities covered by ether energy end of 2022 you can definitely expect but but you know what like i i'll answer it in this way that if you look at us we already have the product right it only is to our advantage if we can expand distribution fast faster and faster right now exact deadlines depend upon the right partner the amount of time that they take to make get a build to happen okay and sometimes in this journey we work with a partner till a certain mile then things do not work in the way that we want we again look out another partner hence putting finite dates sometimes becomes a little difficult difficult the intent is obviously to reach out to all the cities that you mentioned the earlier we get to there the more business we get so it's only to our advantage that we do that i would hold on to any partner coming on board and experience center getting built before giving date about any city because once i give a date i would like to live up to it then later on go back and say hey that date is now so we need to wait for surprises though. i think that's not a bad thing right <laughs> I like if you give me if you ask me for a time horizon hey is this going to come in the financial year 2022 i'll say oh, obviously it's going to come right all the cities that you mentioned if you ask me which month i would i would give you surprises is okay. how i would so this is actually one one from uh, one of our subscribers asked this either manufacturing unit in bosu 
but why there is no experience center in mosul uh, so it's a fair question right uh, our our ability to expand experience centers on our own uh, will be limited right which is why we did bangalore we did chennai and now we are looking at more and more partners to you know expand the distribution so if there was a distributor or a partner in mosul who sees business sense in setting up a uh, experience center over there i think we'll be willing to collaborate there is no reason for us to not collaborate with that partner uh, so it's a journey like whether it will happen in 2022 or 2023 i think the question is that our intent is to expand to more and more scooter riding cities of india so just to mention about the distributor and your so why would you specifically choose one experience center in one city why there will be no retail outlets so actually it's not a it's not a very very firm decision that we will only do one retail outlet i think there is no there is no strategy of that nature uh, we want to make sure that the partners who are coming on board today actually find business value in this partnership right and like if we opened up let's say 30 uh, dealerships in bangalore today then none of those dealers will find true value they will not be able to partner with us for a long term to expand this category and i think it's important that at this stage we work with fewer reliable partners and grow along with them uh, which is our reason of of having fewer partners but does fewer partners mean only one location it absolutely doesn't so even if you today if you go to ba- look at bangalore or if you look at chennai beyond our experience centers we have opened up multiple test ride locations and our intent is to make it easy for consumers to be able to take a ride of the 450x without having to travel to let's say one particular uh, like the like the it city in in hyderabad to be able to do that right? that's the intent across cities in the next 2 3 months i think every city will have multiple locations from where test rides can happen do we want multiple locations where our partner has to invest in a retail outlet and set up shop i think that that just depends upon how fast those cities scale up as cities scale up we will have more than one location so uh, coming to your eta uh, profit take self scooter so the major problem whatever the most of the subscribers or the users they have uh, shared to the detail they said like there is some issue with the ot upgrade sometimes there is a problem with dashboard so what is the immediate resolution i, I think the, the response to that is that uh, if you look at the 450 platform right now i think it's stabilized considerably and we keep doing over the year updates and we do not face problems around it right uh, with the 450x i will not say that we have not faced issues around uh, the software or the ots but i think the last couple of releases have been way more stable uh, they have uh, cleared out the kind of issues that the consumers were facing see our, our cycle time is really fast because we have the community because we are listening to consumers constantly because we have the app we quickly get a feedback of what problems consumers are facing we are able to prioritize them and give it back to the consumer really fast imagine any other oem listening to the consumer making change in the product and releasing out to 100% of consumers the kind of cycle time it would take right uh, but i can confidently tell you that because of the ota because of us having a very strong community and constantly listening to the consumers because this two way channel exists and we have the capability to do it and because our software is in house we build it stack up from from in house we are able to make these changes faster i for your consumers i would or your or people who read through your blogs i would say that in the next 3 to 6 months we should see our software is only getting more and more stable finally tell us something about the future plans of beta energy i think future is 2022 and 2022 is just about increasing distribution increasing distribution increasing distribution we've got huge amount of brand love across the country the awareness is very high people love the product they need to understand the features and benefits of the product they need to test ride the product to be okay to buy a product with this kind of upfront price so our task is very very clearly cut we have to go to more and more reach out to more and more cities have a retail outlet there have more bumps on the vehicle which means more and more and more test rides because the moment consumers take a test ride a thousand myths get broken and they know what the scooter is about there are enough consumers out there who are willing to pay a decent price for a great value product and we've seen that repeatedly after markets and our new market should be no different so it is like i was saying in some other interview it is taking our distribution on a warp mode that's what the next year is about thank you so much anil chandra for sharing all the experience about the eta agency and the uh, plans of eta yes and thank you so much for answering the subscriber questions also you are go green go electric for sure and i'll add and say try the 450x Hey, thanks a lot, Krishna. Thanks for this time.